The production possibility curve gives us a way of introducing one of the most important ideas in all of economics, and that's the idea of opportunity costs. When most people think about the cost of doing something, they're thinking about how much money it's going to cost to do whatever it is that you're doing. But to an economist, that's not the right measure of costs. There are many things we do in life that don't involve any money costs at all. Suppose, for example, you want to spend an hour with your friends, just hanging out with them. It'll cost you no money whatsoever. Does that mean that you didn't give up anything by spending an hour with your friends? Well, no, you could have done something else with that hour. Perhaps your next best alternative was you could have spent an hour studying for this class. So by spending an hour with your friends, you're giving up the opportunity of spending an hour studying for this class. The opportunity cost of doing something is then what we give up by doing something. Or sometimes we define the opportunity cost as the next best alternative that we give up by doing whatever it is that we're doing. So you can see that when thinking about costs in this way, economics has so much more to say about the world than just the world that involves exchanges of money. Everything we do has an opportunity cost. Everything we do involves giving up doing something else. It might be that the opportunity cost is in terms of money. So we give up the opportunity of spending that money on something else. Or it might be that the opportunity cost is in terms of time. We're giving up time that we could have used for something else. Or there might be some other resource we're giving up that we could have used for some other purpose. Because every decision involves a cost, every decision involves some economics. Now let's turn that idea of opportunity costs to the production possibility curve. Let's think about this economy and let's think about what is the opportunity cost of producing one banana. Well, workers in this economy are twice as productive at producing apples as they are at producing bananas. So whenever we produce an additional banana, we're giving up producing two apples. So the opportunity cost of one banana is two apples. What about the opportunity cost of one apple? Well, we're twice as productive at producing apples as we are at producing bananas. So every time we produce an additional apple, we give up producing half a banana. So the opportunity cost of producing one apple would be one half of a banana. So where do we see that in this production possibility curve? Well, let's label something that we haven't labeled yet. We've labeled the intercepts, but we haven't labeled the slope. What's the slope of this production possibilities curve? A slope of a line is the rise divided by the run. So when we go from this point to this point, we're going down by 120. That's a negative rise of 120. And we're going over by 60. That's a run in the horizontal direction of 60. So the slope of this line is minus 120 divided by 60, which is minus 2. What does that slope tell us? It tells us that if we start at a point like this and we want to go over by 1, we have to go down by 2. So if we want to produce an additional banana, we can't just produce the additional banana and stay at the same apple production. That would take us outside of the production possibilities curve. Instead, if we want to go over by 1, we have to go down by 2. So we have to go down by 2 to go over by 1. In order to produce an additional banana, we have to give up two apples. In other words, this slope tells us the opportunity cost of one banana. 
every time we produce an additional banana, we have to go down in the graph by two. We lose two apples. So the opportunity cost of one banana is two apples. Well, what about the opportunity cost of producing an apple? Well, now we have to go in the opposite direction. We, have, we want to go up by one, but we can't just go up because that would take us outside of the production possibilities curve. But if we go up by one, we'll have to go over by one half. So the opportunity cost of producing an apple is one half of a banana, and that's the inverse of this slope. So the inverse of the slope is minus one half. And that gives us the opportunity cost of one apple in terms of bananas. This is always going to be the case in production possibilities curves. The slope is the opportunity cost of producing additional quantities of the good on the horizontal axis in terms of the good on the vertical axis. The inverse of the slope is the opportunity cost of producing an additional good on the vertical axis in terms of the good on the horizontal axis. So now that we know how to read opportunity costs in the production possibility curve, we can see how those opportunity costs change as there are changes in the economy. So suppose, for example, that we go to the case where there was an increase in technology for producing bananas. We start with our original production possibility curve, which had a slope of minus two. Then we go and say, what if bananas become, what if workers become more productive in producing bananas? So instead of being able to produce 60, if we use all workers, we're able to produce 120, just as many as we were able to produce apples if we devoted all of our workers to producing apples. We now get a new production possibility curve that has a slope of minus 1. We go down by 120 and over by 120. This change in, the, in technology for producing bananas has changed the opportunity cost of producing bananas. It used to be we had to give up two apples for every banana we produced. Now we only have to give up one apple for every banana we produce because now we're equally productive as workers in producing bananas as we are at producing apples. What if there was a general change in the technology? When there was a general change in the technology, we said that that results in a shift in the production possibility curve. So if that general change in the technology increases our productivity in the apple sector, just as it in increases the productivity in the banana sector by the same proportion, then we get this parallel shift. So we maintain the slope at minus 2. If there's a general increase in technology, if we were twice as productive in producing apples as bananas before, we'll still be twice as productive at producing apples as bananas after the technological change, except we'll be able to produce more apples and more bananas for every worker. But the opportunity cost of producing bananas hasn't changed. So production possibilities curves don't just illustrate the productive capacity of an, economist, of an economy, they also illustrate the opportunity costs we face as we choose to produce more of one thing and less of another. Let me add a final caveat to the shape of these production possibility curves. Oftentimes, you'll see production possibility curves that aren't straight lines. So suppose we think about bananas and apples again, but instead of assuming that all workers are equally productive at producing apples and bananas, we assume that some workers are relatively better at producing apples and some workers are relatively better at producing bananas. That would mean that if we used all of our workers to produce apples, we'd be using those who are really good at producing apples and those who aren't that good at producing apples, who are better at producing bananas. If we started at that point, 
and we wanted to shift towards banana production, what we would do is we would first shift the workers that aren't that good at producing apples, but are really good at producing bananas. So the opportunity cost of producing additional bananas when we start producing bananas would be relatively low because we're using workers that aren't very good at producing apples, but are really good at producing bananas. But then as we produce more and more bananas, we would have to begin to use workers that are actually really good at producing apples and not so good at producing bananas. So now the opportunity cost of producing additional bananas would increase. We're using workers who are not as good at producing bananas and who are really good at producing apples. So we're giving up more apples for every banana the more bananas we produce. So if we start with a low opportunity cost for producing additional bananas, we start with a shallow slope. But that slope is going to get steeper and steeper as we move towards shifting workers that are not as good at producing bananas away from the apple industry. So sometimes we'll see production possibility curves that have this shape, that have changing opportunity costs along the production possibility curve. But for most of our purposes, we can simply stick with the straight line production possibility curves that we've developed.